The Alfa Romeo 4C dissects the ground between the Lotus Elise and the Porsche Cayman. It's expensive, quite small, and we've had one in the UK for a few days, so it seemed only right to drag a Cayman S along to see which is best. Spec-wise, these two are quite different. From Italy, we have an inline four turbocharged to produce 240 horsepower and 258 foot-pounds. Weight is 995 kilograms. The Porsche is bigger and heavier at 1,350 kilograms, but its flat six gives 325 horsepower and 273 foot-pounds. Normally with these videos, I run a kind of generic introduction and we talk about the cars and what we're gonna do and then we try and find a winner. I'm gonna reverse it this time. The Alfa 4C is not the car I expected on UK roads. When I drove it in Italy last year, I loved it. But I drove it on some quite specific Italian roads and then I drove it on a test track and had great fun. I got in it two nights ago and I really wasn't expecting what I found. It was tram lining all over the place, it was finding cambers, the car's on sports suspension and big wheels. So let's just say this, is there any reason why you'd buy a 4C over a Cayman at the moment? Let's find out. We're in the Cayman now. The weather is horrible, genuinely horrible. It's so wet I'm always wearing a coat inside and yet I have enormous confidence in this Porsche. Even though it's got electric steering, on a fully dry road, that's not a problem. It's when there's changing wet to dry, the electric steering falls apart. But on today's roads, in these conditions, this car is a peach. Reasons why it's a peach. Steering, good but not exceptional. That's a surprise for a Cayman, but we know that about this latest generation car with electric steering. Engine, gorgeous, six cylinders, responsive, powerful, engaging. Here's a good word for you, sonorous. That means it sounds good. Um, gearbox, PDK in this one. Okay, I'd rather have the Manuel, but you know, this does me absolutely fine. Open differential, which means we're a little bit careful, but when we're coming out of second gear turns, it'll do that, and it's lovely. Gear shifts, crisp and fast. I've got a sports exhaust this one, so I've got a button to press and it makes a lovely noise. The handling in these conditions, I mean, the roads are part flooded and the crown of the road is, is quite pronounced, but this isn't following any cameras like the Alfa, it feels absolutely perfect on the road. In fact, pound for pound, this is the Floyd Mayweather of sports cars because it's, it's just the best. There are others that are faster, there are those that are more exciting and sound better, but if you look at what they can actually achieve and the fun they give you, the Cayman is probably the best sports car on the planet. So I think it's going to be quite hard for the Alpha to prove to me that it's worth buying over this thing. The Alpha 4C is a complicated vehicle. You might see that I'm wearing different clothes than I was wearing in the Cayman. I've had to revisit the car and there were a couple of issues. What I will say is this. I love the fact that it's not a Cayman. I love the fact that it's closer in philosophy to a Lotus Elise, it's a lighter car, it's less comfortable, it moves around more on the road. It does sniff out the odd camber, it does follow the crown of the road, but it involves you more in that respect. I love the powertrain, I love all that torque, the way that I'm in fifth gear now and I just put my foot down at 50 and it just surges. I don't like the steering wheel still. I love the way it looks from the outside, I love the way people respond to the car just so special but the dynamics on the road once you get over the fact that you're so excited about being in it but well, they're a mixture really the stuff that i really like i like the fact that it feels quite supple it's not being too hurried over bumps it feels nicely damped but but it does lack a little bit of rear suspension sophistication to me i feel that I wish it had double wishbones at the back, to be honest with you, and I think we all looked at the spec originally and felt that. The steering, it's got that lovely freedom that you expect from an unassisted steering, but just off centre, certainly on British roads, there's a lightness to it, and that allows the car to be dragged a bit more by the crown of the road. So you do find yourself, Dukes of Hazzard style, sort of managing the car even in a straight line. Some people will like that and think it's a sense of occasion. Grip's pretty good, although it does understeer a little bit in British conditions, so if it's slightly damp, you get a bit of a front push. 
traction, it's superb. It's really not a worry at all. Engine note, well, from the inside, a bit dull and four cylinders from the outside. Dead exciting, actually. The cabin, well, I love the electronic dash. I think that looks fantastic. I don't like the steering wheel. This sort of parrot, whatever it's called, is it a parrot? I'm not sure. All-in-one hi-fi they've bought in, that's pretty dreadful but it feels special again. It just doesn't feel ordinary and that's got to be celebrated, hasn't it? Gearbox isn't the fastest, but on the road, I don't have a problem with that. If I pull a paddle, I mean, you know, okay, it's not as quick as a GT3, but it's still pretty instantaneous to me. Downshifts are well matched. NVH levels, quite a bit more than the Cayman, but then you expected that. This is closer in philosophy to an Elise than a Cayman. The question I have to ask myself is this, if I was, into the subject enough, into Alfa Romeo enough, and I wanted a car that wasn't a Cayman enough, would the shortcomings of the 4C be too much for me? For me, no, they wouldn't. They really wouldn't. But for some people, they might just be. I can accept that. I can accept that. On the track, the 4C is nimble, but I just couldn't unstick it the way I did on the launch last year. Steering effort is high too, and you just miss the ability to rev it out the way you can in the Porsche. Sadly for Alfa, it's up against one of the best cars ever made. The Cayman really is that good. Its chassis is miles beyond anything else in this or just about any other class, and the engine and gearbox are genius. But that doesn't make the 4C redundant. There are a few issues with the 4C on British roads, and I think it suffers for having that rear strut suspension. This car also had sport suspension, and I think losing the rear roll bar and having softer dampers from the normal package will really help, as would some smaller wheels and tyres. I can't wait to drive that car. But it's a great looking thing that's a blast to drive, and best of all, it isn't another Porsche. In Porsche's defence, the Cayman S is just plain brilliant. <laughs>